Hey guys, this is Dr. Subha from Nani, currently an intern working in New Delhi and also have passed my step 1, USMLE step 1 recently and today I'm going to talk about everything you need to know for USMLE step 1. So this will serve you as a guide if you're starting to prepare for USMLE step 1. I'm going to cover all these topics which are listed here. We'll start from the right from the basics till the end on when can you be ready to take this exam so this is a comprehensive guide and I'll have chapter markers in between so you can jump to the topic which you feel you need in your journey where you are in your journey right now and if you are you know uh, from the basics you want to start from the basics then let's begin from the start so the overview number one what is USMLE step one so USMLE step one is an exam which you have to take to enter US residency uh, so residency in the US which is postgraduate exam after your MBBS in the US you have to take USMLE step one you have to take USMLE step two there are different pathways also which you have to take for example an OET exam before uh, applying for uh, residency in the US so USMLE step one is the first step so what is this exam this is an eight hour long exam which is actually seven hour long with one hour of break so each uh, seven hour like this seven hour long exam is divided into seven blocks of one hour each and one block contains 40 questions so we have 40 questions of one hour 40 questions second hour third hour and also you have one hour break in total in between so it makes it a total of eight hour exam so this is about USMLE step one when can you take this exam you can take this exam right in your medical school so you don't have to graduate medical school to take this exam you can take it in your medical school specifically after second or third year when you pass your basic sciences so where so let's cover like what are what is the syllabus or what you need to know for USMLE step one so USMLE step one covers the basic sciences subjects so your anatomy your physiology your biochemistry microbiology all the basic sciences subject uh, we'll discuss more about the resources and the study plan so whenever your basic sciences subjects are complete in your med school which is around second or third year you can take this USMLE step one exam so this was the, like all about the basics and when you can take your step one now let's jump to the resources of how you can prepare for this USMLE step one exam so to prepare for this exam you need to know everything uh, which we talked about the basic sciences but there are some gold standard specific resources which are recommended to use if you want to prepare for this exam so let's first dive into books what books are recommended so for the book the gold standard book is first aid for USMLE step one and you can buy the latest edition so this is a 2023 guide so first aid for USMLE step one 2023 this will serve as a structure and a high yield review revision for all you need to know about your assembly step one right from like even preparing you to take the exam and also like the material you need to cover in the exam so this is this will be your golden book which you have to follow you must remember everything from this book and essentially this is your syllabus or structure of the book and to understand this book you need you might need some video resources so if your basics are strong from your med school if you've done your anatomy basic sciences really well in med school you might not need other resources you you would just be okay with having this first aid because you could understand whatever is written in this first aid book and then you can directly jump to question banks but for most people, especially for international medical graduates who are not studying according to this curriculum, uh, you will need more resources to understand this book and these resources come in the form of uh, video lectures. So there are also some gold standard video lectures or video resources which you should use. Uh, some of them are like Pathoma which is the gold standard for pathology. So all your pathology of all the systems will be covered by Pathoma. There is Boards and Beyond which will which covers basically everything you need to know about USMLE step one so for personally what I did I did everything pathology related from pathoma and everything else from boards and beyond 
and I did pharmacology and microbiology from Sketchy. So the third video resource is Sketchy. So these are cartoons, video mnemonics which help you memorize the you know the bugs and the drugs uh, because these are very volatile things. It's hard to remember the side effects, the users and everything else. So this video resource is specifically helpful in that. Also Pixorize is another video resource which is helpful in biochemistry which I personally use. So you have uh, these four video resources, Boards and Beyond, which covers everything you can use it as a sole video resource. Uh, Pathoma, which covers the pathology. Sketchy, recommended from pharmacology and microbiology. Pixorize, you can use it for biochemistry. Recently, there has been a new video resource which, is, which has recently come out in 2022 and then 2023. I used it a bit for my step exam. It's called Med School Bootcamp. Uh, it also covers everything. It is like Boards and Beyond. It is planning to cover all the subjects, everything you need to know about step one. So definitely worth looking into, but the gold standard uh, resources will definitely be these Pathoma, Sketchy and Boards and Beyond. Uh, definitely use these. Now coming to question banks. Now apart from this book and video resources, you will also new, uh, need some question banks to prepare for your step one. So the gold standard question bank to prepare for step one is UWorld, USMLE question bank, which consists about right now 3,700, 3,800 questions. So this is the gold standard question bank, which you need to need to absolutely need to do before taking your step one. Another very competitive, you know, question exam, right? Uh, you know, challenging you world for the gold standard is Amboss Question Bank. Amboss has its own library also, so uh, some people actually find it better than you world that you can directly, you know, do this question bank and also learn from the library. So if you are someone who likes to learn from books. Um, and not from video resources, Amboss Question Bank is actually a very good resource to start out from and then maybe you can jump to UWorld. Uh, and a third question bank I would recommend which you can use before uh, your UWorld would be USMLE RX Question Bank. So USMLE RX Question Bank is by First Aid, uh, the book which I told you about, the same, the same people have uh, these question banks. So this question bank works really well with this book so if you're studying with this book for example you're watching a video lecture uh, understanding this page of the book and then you can do the questions uh, and then you know from this page of the book and that's how you'll revise and review uh, so this question bank is really helpful to nail down these basic concepts before you dive into a much gold standard question bank and i would say a much difficult question bank like you would so I also have a detailed video covering all these resources so you can check it out uh, by clicking the tags, uh, the cards above and I'll also link it down in the description box below. But in general, these are the video resources or these are the general books, resources and question banks which you will need to prepare for USMLE uh, step one exam. Now comes the uh, revision and review part. Now you can study all of it, but how to revise and review it. So there are a few methods to do that. Uh, some tools, if you are a, more of a digital person, I would say Anki is definitely the number one tool for your revision and review. Uh, Anki, I have, again, tons of videos on Anki. I have a whole playlist. I'll link it in the cards above and also in the description box below. Basically, it is a form of space repetition and people have created uh, pre-made flashcards. So Anki is a flashcard tool. So you see a flashcard, if you know it, you, you mark it good. And this flashcard keeps coming again and again until you basically review it, I don't know, uncountable times uh, before you take your exam. So Anki is a revision tool. Again, I have videos covering it. Uh, if you are more of a, you know, a textbook kind of person or you want to review uh, physically and not digitally uh, your best resources would actually be to do as many questions as you can and also when you're jumping into UWorld which is your gold standard question bank UWorld has their own UWorld notes so rather than taking notes elsewhere you can just take it inside the app to save the time like just copy paste the tables the high yield points your incorrects and just keep it there so you have a review 
um, you know notebook also with you so in the end or week to week you can read that review notebook and basically nail down your week topics and also from the question bank you'll be uh, reviewing all your material so if you are a digital person anki is definitely the number one tool anking deck is definitely the number one deck again more details in the videos which i have covered anki in and if you're not a anki person i would say the more questions you do the better you can review the material because it's so vast another thing most people talk about is um, depends on when are you taking the exam so if if you have a really solid base and you've just passed your first uh, second or third year just completed your basic sciences you can actually uh, jump into u world and you might not need much review and u world will be enough to you know gear you up for the exam review and revision everything because you have studied really well in your medical school from standardized books and everything else and you basically remember everything and the other scenario could be if you are a graduate you have forgotten most of your basic sciences which was like someone like me you might have to dive you have to might have to spend more time into diving into these video resources into more and more question banks till you can get to the point where you can feel confident to take the exam so again the preparation time for your exam depends on this if your basic knowledge and everything is good 6 to 8 months you can take this exam maybe even sooner depends on how uh, your basic knowledge is and if you're a graduate or if you have forgotten in any case even if you're med school and forgotten um, your basic sciences or if you don't if you feel you don't have a good base it could easily take up to 1 year or even 1.5 to 2 years in some case if you're doing this with a job or something else so definitely keep that into consideration it's not a short term process um, it minimum i would say 6 months and maximum i would say it can even take up to 1.5 to 2 years now when do you know the main point when do you know that you can take this exam so okay you have done all these resources but you need some uh, assessments or something uh, a tool which you can know that i am ready to take this exam because this exam is pass or fail you will not get a mark so if you cross this threshold you pass and if you do not cross this threshold it is fail in 2023 it's currently at 196 so if you get above 196 you will pass this exam so uh, for this you need to do some self assessment exams so like these are like mock exams and uh, nbme uh, the people who make basically you uh, were usmle exam they themselves have uh, these mock exams which you can take and they give you a percentage and also a chance of passing uh, so you can gauge your preparation and you can see where you stand and when are you ready to take the exam so what i would recommend you if you're getting uh, around 65% in these nbme exams you can uh, say that you will most likely pass the exam if you're getting around 65% 1 2% plus minus if you're getting 70% plus consistently i would say you are safe to pass the exam you should definitely take it now uh, before you drop your score or something like that it was a very safe score if you're getting 70% plus me personally i targeted 70 plus 75 plus and i had i achieved that goal and i took the exam so i would highly recommend you to hit that 70 plus goal but if you cannot 65 plus or around 65 is also pass uh, like i would say to uh, to clear this exam uh, comfortably you also have u world essays which are included in your u world subscription which is a gold gold standard question bank uh, you can also use these to gauge your preparation in 2023 uh, so these are not as predictive as nbmes uh, i would say Uh, your nbmes are i would say the most predictive of your performance in the real exam but definitely you will essays are uh, something not to miss i took them and it will give you a three digit score so you can better analyze yourself that okay if 196 is passing i am getting a 220 so even if i perform a bit bad in the exam i can drop to 205 and that still pass so if you want an objective score you can take these uw essays 
and the last one uh, is free 120 which is again by the NVME the people who make you assembly these are just a set of 120 questions so that is three blocks as I told you 40 questions is one block so that is three blocks and they are free available for free uh, on their NVME website and you can take them and this does not give you a percentage or something but you can calculate your percentage uh, depend on how many questions you get correct and incorrect still I would say NBMEs are the most predictive and these are basically about your this is basically about your self assessments also from time to time various other companies uh, keep doing their self assessment exams so for example around the time of Feb to March I would say uh, Amboss uh, does their free self assessment Lecturio does this free, free self assessment even USMLE RX uh, uh, the first aid book like who made the first aid book even they have their free self-assessment also you get their self-assessment with their own subscriptions as well but I'm just referring it now because most people have UWorld so definitely they will do the UWorld SA2 uh, SA1 and SA2 the two uh, self-assessments uh, because it's included in your uh, you know subscription but if you don't have the other subscriptions like Lecturio, Amboss, USMLE, RX, they do offer their free self-assessments maybe in the month of Feb, March or uh, like they keep updating it and you can take them for free. So this is about the self-assessments. Try to hit 65 plus and 70 plus for a safe pass and you'll be good to go. Uh, so this was all about your uh, basic overview about your step one exam. We covered uh, right from what is step one exam to what resources you can use when to take the step one exam uh, how to know you're ready to take the exam also how to review your material with Anki and everything else again I have detailed video explaining all of this in detail for example explaining the resources explaining Anki and more videos on USMLE so you definitely have to check them out but for your basic overview this is your USMLE step 1 2023 guide and I wish you all the best if you're going to take your step 1 soon and that's all for me bye bye